something out that. Yeah, this is in the form of cinema and by guns and it's like a museum of Victorian streets. It's quite nice. A lot to see, a lot to look at, a lot to reminisce. And I like my history, so this is perfect for me. Okay, it's too good to eat. if you're ever down in the English Revue area. It's road connected, it's on Main Street in Babacan. you got to come. I'm enjoying my time here. I will walk around but each place about three times. Father tells me stories of his exploits in India. He was a major with Her Majesty's 11th foot. He served 30 years until 1857, 
and he was wounded in the Indian mutiny. Sadly, too much port wine over the years has led to his doubt. He wants his slippers in the slipper box and front of the fire. The servant's bell is on the wall to his chair in case he needs to call for assistance. Grandfather worries so about his asper dishtra plant. We water it with tea from the brass spirit kettle when it has cooled. My mother taught me how to embroider. She is so nimble with her fingers. You can see some of her handiwork and pulse screen by the fire. The screen prevents the heat from melting the wax on his face. Now that I am older, I am permitted to do the beadwork which you can see on the tea cosy on the table. Some of my early work is on the sandler by Shea's Lodge. During the long dark winter evenings, my father loves to gather the family together to play games like charades, but I believe his favourite is military whist. He is also very keen on new inventions. He was one of the first to purchase a gramophone, a machine invented by Thomas Edison, which has to be constantly wound up. Whilst listening to Grandfather's gramophone, I sit quietly watching Mother winding wool using the wool winder, which is always kept by a chaise lodge. First and second floor, and that little talk in the lit display. Now. You are now looking at Bygones Victorian Street in miniature. Most people who come into Bygones want to know how did we do it and why. It all began with a steam engine. One day my husband went out and came home with a 28 tonne railway tank engine. He had seen it advertised in his railway magazine and purchased it from Farm of Dogs, where it had been replaced by the inevitable diesel engine. We already had a house full of railway armour. The walls were covered in engine nameplates, there were lamps hanging from ceilings and large copper chimneys were filled with house plants. When he announced a steam engine was on its way, that was the last straw. I insisted it wasn't suitable for our small garden, and the house already looked like a railway museum. Yes, a railway museum was what my husband had always dreamed of creating. So now was the time to take the plunge. This was a big gamble, as at the time, 
we ran an extremely busy sub-post office with a regular monthly salary and two other news agents. We didn't delay. We sold the post office within months and bought an old cinema only three doors away. We now had an empty shell, a large engine, plenty of railway armor and nothing else. We realized this was not enough to hold the general public's interest. After all, everyone is not a train fanatic. We both love antiques and going to auctions in particular. So why not build an old-fashioned street with old shops and rooms and fill them with all the items from a bygone age? So this is how it all began. The next problem was who would build it, as it was impossible to contract such a project to a building firm. Over the years, an excellent mason had made many alterations to our shops, and our next door neighbour's brother was a very skilled carpenter. With a little persuasion, we fired their imaginations, and they set about the daunting task of recreating a Victorian street life-size. Now our dreams were materialising and for nine months we all worked together day and night to plan, build and search out old windows, bricks, slates, wood and old shop contents. We travelled all over the country going to demolition sites, architectural antique dealers and auctions. Gradually the street became a reality and the night before bygones was opened all our friends came to work into the early hours of 23rd May 1987 when with much trepidation our doors were opened to the public by the Mayor of Torbay and the rest is history. Oh dear, I suppose. I'm just going to insert a clip in a minute. Yeah. Which will explain what how Bygones was created when it's opened. And just a bit of insight for you if you weren't sure what Bygones is and everything and also my little bits of clips and photos what I've done today should give you a bit of insight into bygones and give you all something to talk about but now I'm carrying on and looking at going to war it's war time take cover got me have some fun Experience the war, come on then. Into the trenches now. It may be dark, come on. Ooh. Ooh. 
have a heart, Sarge. I wanted to see eating breakfast at the Ritz. I'll give you breakfast at the Ritz and tea at the Savoy. Now come on, get a move on. I'm just going, Sarge. I'll see you for tea. Charge! I think I've just accidentally brought I think more well, accidentally broke out. <laughs> oh, that's better. We're back into civilization now, and that was quick, weren't it?